All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, as you can see, the person to my, I guess it would be my left at this point, yeah. my left, um, it's not Casey this week. Uh, <laughs> Casey's sick. Apparently, he's throwing up right now. Um, so Manny is filling in for him. Manny, you were going to be a guest anyways this week. Yes. But with Casey being sick, you are now the co-host. How how does it feel to step into Casey's shoes, be the co-host, and do you think you're going to do a better job than him? I think I'm going to do a better job. We all know that. <laughs> uh, but they are big, pretty big shoes to fill. Casey is one of a kind. We all know that. <laughs> that's that's definitely true. Um, yeah. All right, so we are coming off a forty to nothing shellacking, and that's the word I used on Sunday. It's it was a shellacking of the Houston Texans. The Bills controlled the entire game from start to finish. It wasn't always the prettiest. There was some yeah. times where it was like, oh, why did we do that? But all in all, there's really not a whole lot to complain about. Like It was a great game to yeah. watch as a fan, and you've heard about it all already. Like if, if you're listening to us at this point, you've probably heard two or three other shows talk through the game. So we're not going to focus a majority of our time on the game, but we do want to still cover a little bit of it. We yeah. have our likes, we have our dislikes, and then we're going to give out winners and losers. Yeah. from the week yeah um so i think manny i'm gonna let you go first what is the do you want to do likes or dislikes first i guess we'll we'll start that way uh yeah whatever you want to do we can start with that but uh okay let's you know what let's do this let's get the dislikes out of the way i think it's going to be difficult to find something to dislike yeah. i do have I, I have two things that we can talk about if you don't have anything but that's all. I only could find two things through the entire game. Maybe that's just me. I'm, I'm interested to hear what your dislike from the game was, though. Sure. Uh, the, like you said, there there wasn't a lot of dislikes in this game. Uh, overall, they were really good. Um, I, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about the dislikes. Uh, the one thing, obviously, we didn't punt much, and I'm not a hack fan. So I don't know, you know, he's going to be important uh, sooner or later and probably this week, uh, but I, I still not set on him. Um, the other thing, maybe the return, if, if there was anything that I would probably still like to see some is the, and I'm a Isaiah McKenzie fan and he's had some good returns, but I haven't seen enough of it, both sides, the, the punting and the return side of it. And so if you want to nitpick on anything, that's probably it. <laughs> so in, in terms of the punting, is it – and I, Casey and I talked about this in a previous yeah. episode. Yeah. We think that Matt Hack punts really slowly. He yeah. talked to Pat McAfee on Twitter about it, which was yeah. very cool. Yeah. And apparently the timing worked out where maybe he's not as slow as we think, but it still looks the, slow. Is that your gripe with him still, or is it something it is. different? I, I think, like, if you look at his – the moment he receives the ball and he drops it, it looks like he is taking maybe two seconds longer than most other punters I've ever seen. And it feels like that, yeah. It feels like, like obviously that. I'm not, I'm not on the field, so I don't know. But to me, visually on the TV, that's what it looks like, that he's taking a little bit longer. And there has been a couple of punts where he got off, like he got him off, but it looked like it was pretty close to a player getting a hand on it. So that is my only uh, gripe. And that could be just, you know, um, our long snapper and the punter just gelling and maybe there's a timing issue, but I don't know. But there's something there that just rubs me the wrong way. It it just it feels I will admit it feels weird watching him punt yeah, because it yeah. just does feel a little bit slower. I don't I don't know how to explain it, especially yeah. after Casey was able to interact with Pat McAfee about this, yeah. and yeah. the timing seems to fit within that general range of what you should expect from a punter. But I, I agree with you completely. It just yeah. it looks like every single time he's going to get blocked. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever been that nervous about a punt yeah. being blocked as yeah. consistently as I am with him. Yeah, he, it just where where he drops the ball to kick it. That moment is where I I notice that it is a little bit slower than Corey Bohork has had. Uh, yeah, we were and, talking about recent time. 
it it could be a bit of recency bias on our part too, just yeah, because yeah. he got a punt blocked the first game of the season. Yeah, yeah. So seeing that might kind of instill that fear in us a little bit too. So it might be a little bit of both where we have that recency yeah. bias, but also maybe he is still a little bit slower than we would like yeah. him to be. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely understand that dislike. You did mention the actual returns though. Yeah. I, I actually disagree with you on this one. I'm not yeah. upset with the return game outside of like one freak play. Yeah. obviously against the Washington football team. Yeah. Is it more that there hasn't been a big time return yet for you? Is that where your gripe comes or is like, is it's, there something different? Honestly, Kyle, it's not even a gripe. It's basically, I haven't seen much of it, right? Like it, there's nothing you know, that most, wowed you yet. Yeah. Nothing that's wowed me to be like, Oh, it's, you know, that was a great return. Obviously kickoffs. We're not getting much, uh, to return on the kickoff. There's <laughs> not many times we're getting a chance to return a kickoff. Right? We've shut out two teams, so we don't get a lot of kickoffs other than the opening or the half. And those are usually touchbacks anyways nowadays. Um, and then the punt return, you know, he's been decent, but it, there's not been that wow. And I'm a huge Isaiah McKenzie, and I think he's due for it, but we'll see when that happens. And this just me being nitpicky because obviously they had a really good game. Yeah. Yeah. My, my things that I didn't like the two things, they're actually not two things that you mentioned. One of them I would say is kind of out of anyone's control. It's just, it happens sometimes. The other one I think is something that legitimately needs to be worked on. So I'll start with that one. I I'm nervous about the bills fumbling problems. I think the bills have a fumbling problem. Um, I don't know the numbers on the season off the top of my head, but I did see that the Bills are leading the league in fumbles. Not fumbles recovered by the by the opposing defense. They're not losing all of these fumbles, but the ball is still coming out. And it's not like it's just one guy. It's not like it's just Devin Singletary. It's not like it's just Zach Moss. It's not like it's just Josh Allen. There's other guys who are fumbling the ball too. Stefan Diggs had a fumble, albeit that was a like it was a massive hit on him, but he still lost the ball. The Bills need to get that under control because eventually they're not going to be able to recover all of their fumbles and it's going to come back to bite them. So hopefully that's something they can get under control. That was probably the first thing that I noticed that I didn't like from the game. The other thing is obviously the Matt Milano injury. I, Yeah. He gets, and I, I've been a part of this, he definitely gets unfairly tagged as a guy who is just always injured. That's not the case. But this hamstring injury, I do think that this is something that's come up with him before. And it seems like it always comes up against the Chiefs. This is two years in a row now that in the regular season, he's got an injury leading into the Chiefs game. And he is one of the most important players against the Chiefs. And like I said, this is something that he can't really control. It's, It's not something where I'm like, oh, this is a dislike because he played bad. No, he's been playing great. He's like an he's at an all pro level this year so far. Yeah, yeah. I think if you had to pick an all pro team right now, he'd be on first <laughs> or second team. He's been that good. But losing him going into the Chiefs game, which it looks like right now he's probably not going to be available, that's not ideal. So it's no. my one dislike is something that can be improved on. The other one is just like a happenstance type of thing that it's a freak thing. Injuries are going to happen. You don't yeah. want to see them happen but you especially don't want to see him happen against a bad team going into a game against one of the better teams in the NFL, despite records, because I think this is the type of game where records don't matter as much. So we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit though. Your likes of the game. What is one thing that you did like from the game? I just like their overall, like it looked like they were finally gelling as a team defense and offense. And we had a lot of injuries, like important injuries, like Jordan Boyer was out. Teron Johnson was out. Milano, uh, you know, left. Um, So uh, you had some key injuries on that defense and the defense still looked like they were pretty good. I bet, you know, like it was the Houston Texans, but you still, <laughs> but you still got to have a good enough depth on there to continue that, right? And they got some guys who played in that system now for a while, in in Frazier and McDermott set, and they're depth guys, and they can play, they can fill in for that short time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Klein has proven that, um, but I do agree with you, Milano's injury, it. it that's scary and 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 that worries me a little bit because i find milano and tremaine Edmonds play well together 
Yeah. And without each other, they play it kind of off. <laughs> and so that worries me a lot. But overall, I thought the offense played great. Allen was on key, you know, digs. Other than the fumble, you got to remember with the fumbles from the last game, the weather was horrible. Uh, so it was a little That's bit true. tougher. Uh, the rain was coming down pretty hard in that game. Um, but overall, like offense, defense looked like, you know, nothing other than, you know, busy now at 50% uh, playing time. Other than that, there was nothing really different. Uh, they were playing good. Yeah, I I liked – I mean, it was very difficult for me to narrow down my list of likes. When I watch the game, I try and pick out, like, just keep – making a long list of here's the things I liked. Here's the things I didn't like from the game. Yeah. It was really difficult for me to narrow down the things I didn't like or the things that I liked. It was very difficult for that yeah. this week. Yeah. Um, I think I came down to two things though. And one of them's kind of a cop out. I'm just going to admit that <laughs> right off the jump. It's a cop out. I liked yeah. all things defense. I could not pick yeah. just one yeah. thing because yeah. the defense got pressure. It wasn't like it was, superb where they were always getting pressure. It wasn't as good of pressure as they got in the Miami game, but it was consistent. Yeah. They were stopping the run. Yeah. They weren't allowing Davis Mills to get any, any sort of good passes off. They were tipping the football when it was thrown. They were intercepting the football when it got tipped. They yeah. were in the right place at the right time. They forced all sorts of turnovers. It was just a great game. Like the only thing the defense didn't do against the Texans was score a touchdown themselves. Yeah. That's how good of a game that they played. So I it's kind of a cop out to say that my like from the game is all things defense, but I'm going to throw it out there. I think the thing I want to kind of point towards more though is the running game. Because I love the direction the running game's going. They're not running the ball more than they were last year. Like they're not forcing the running game. It it doesn't ever even feel like they are. But the yards are there. It's yeah. a huge difference in terms of the running game from last year to this year. I don't actually know what changed. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, it's because they're running this scheme or this guy filled in so he's able to pull and open up more holes or whatever it might be. I don't know the exact reason. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But whatever they're doing in the running game this year, it hasn't actually mattered between certain guys on the offensive line or whatever because there was a big switch up between – uh, Daryl or Daryl Williams played at guard and Spencer Brown played at tackle this game that hadn't happened in previous games. The running game is there last year. Everything I harped on was the bills don't need to run the ball more. That's not the issue. The issue. And I, I think a lot of people sat on that one is like, Oh, well the bills need to focus on the running game more. They need to run the ball more, make that the, the focus of the offense. Don't just throw the ball. And I was like, no, like we don't need to do that. We, we don't need to run the ball more. We need to take advantage of the running opportunities better. And I think that's something they've done this year is they've been a lot more efficient in the running game. You've seen that where it's not just Devin Singletary. It's not just Zach Boss. It's not just Josh Allen. Yeah. Anybody who's running the ball <clears throat> has had success because there. it seems like there's a little bit more of an opening for them to get through the line. They're not getting hit behind the line of scrimmage as often and we've seen that they can get away from that if it's not happening all that often. So I like the direction of the running game. Zach Moss has been playing great. Devin Singletary has been playing great. I love the way they're incorporating both of them into the offense. Yeah. Devin Singletary more strictly as a running back. Zach Moss has been incorporated as a running back and as a pass catcher. And I think it suits them very well. I like the direction the offense is going not just as an offense as a whole, but specifically looking at the running game. I think that's great for the future of this team. I, I personally think uh, one of the things that has been better with the run game, especially with Singletary and Moss, is their vision has been better too. You look last year to this year, the hesitation that Singletary has a moment to look for that hole is way better than it was last year. I think both of them took, I believe, and this is my opinion only, uh, I believe they really took to heart that the run game was bad. And I hope I, they did because it was I, bad, I, bad. I, I think Moss, you know, like he even mentioned that fumble and it hit him hard and he wanted to come back and show that that was just a fluke, right? 
Mm -hmm. and Singletary working out like a beast this offseason. You could tell that they had a chip on their shoulder that we can do this and we are the solution, not the problem. And I think that has to do part of it. Like, to me, I don't know about you, but to me, Moss and Singletary look quite quicker than they did last year. They, I think they look more confident in all yeah, honesty. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know if that's because of them personally just feeling more comfortable in the offense or because there's just more open holes. I'm sure it's like a mix of both. Yeah. But when you hand the ball off to them last year, it looked like they were searching more. And I yeah. think you hit the nail on the head this year. It seems like they're just going. Yeah. They're moving quicker. They're able to get their first move off quicker. Yeah. They're able to see the field a little bit better. And I think the the confidence of them being in the offense, seeing how it works, seeing how they can work together because they were more of that tandem backfield and they're going to be the tandem backfield. Yeah. yeah. But just the confidence that they have in themselves and that the offense has in them, I think it's it's translated into – the efficiency of running, not just total run, yeah. uh, total rushing attempts, but it's been effective it, every single game. And it helps Allen too, right? As, yeah. as they get quicker and they find that opening, uh, uh, it helps Allen and the offense to do more play actions, right? It, mm-hmm. it becomes a threat. And that opens up the passing game more, where you don't have to always shotgun Allen passes it. You can do a lot of play action because now defenses have to think, okay, Singletary and Moss are a lot quicker. We got to make a game plan for this. Where last year, you knew what Bills were doing. They were going to throw the ball and that was it. And yeah. they still do, but that threat is there now for other defenses to do. The only thing I... I'm surprised that Moss is getting more of the receptions than Singletary because I still think Singletary is the better pass catching back. And I just, I, 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 I like Moss too, um, but they complement each other. They, they got a different style. Like, I don't know about you, but I find them, you know, a Singletary is the more of that shady McCoy where, you know, the one step outside, boom, you're gone. And Moss is basically like a bull right at you. He'll drag you a couple of yards and stuff. But I've seen Singletary do that this year, which I've never seen him do where he's dragging people over. So... Yeah, I, th- I think it's weird with them because they have different styles that have similar outcomes, but they also have yeah. similar abilities. Yes. Which, so, like, they can both be that power back if need be, and they can both yeah. carry players, but yeah. definitely Zach Moss leans more towards he's going to be better at that than Devin Singletary. Yeah. Devin Singletary can juke somebody out of their shoes and yeah. make them fall to the ground. Zach Moss can do that too, but he's going to look a lot less smooth doing it. Smooth, he's going to yeah. not do it as well yeah. as Devin Singletary. Yeah. But both of them have similar outcomes so far yeah. this year. So I, yeah. I'm very pleased with the way they're yeah, running I have. going this year. And like I said, I think it's going to be very beneficial to this team to have a consistent running game the way they have through the first four games the rest of the year. So yeah. next one up, winner and loser of the week. Do you, I actually kind of want to go first on this one because sure. I, I have something that I need to get out. And I was going to – I want to preface this by saying – this was in my notes before Casey was not going to be on the show. So yeah. I was actually planning on giving Casey props this week because he was my winner of the week. Obviously, he's not on the show. He's kind of – I'm sorry, Casey. I know you're sick and throwing up, but, like, <laughs> yes, maybe he's the loser of the week for missing out on the show. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. really, though. No. <laughs> but my winner of the week is actually Casey because a lot of people right now, they're stepping in. They're trying to get credit for – Dawson Knox for yeah. Spencer Brown being like, oh, I've been the guy who was a fan of him. I've been here. I'm not saying Casey was the absolute first person or the person who discovered them by any means, but he was the first person that I saw that did not stray away from their takes. Yeah. He was on Spencer Brown from the start. He was the only person talking about Spencer Brown that I saw months ahead of the draft, like not yeah. the weeks leading up to the draft, not after pro day, not after anything else. He was the guy who I saw and he talked about it on this show about how Spencer Brown was the guy the bills needed to draft at right tackle because he's the right tackle of the bills future. He talked right. about that on the show. He was right about that. I don't know if Spencer Brown is going to hold on to the right tackle spot the entire year. I don't care. He showed me enough to know that, 
eventually he's going to take over Daryl Williams' spot. So respect to everybody who's trying to jump on the, the bandwagon of that now and claiming because they watch film about it that they're the one who discovered him. Yeah. But I'm sorry, you got to give respect to Casey, who was on the Spencer Brown train before anybody else, because he was. And the other one is Dawson Knox. Yeah. This one's a little bit harder to say that Casey was the only one. He's He's not the only one. But as long as I've known him, he has not strayed away from the fact that he thought Dawson Knox was going to be a good tight end. Didn't matter about the ups and downs. Didn't matter about the trade rumors because I've seen people who are big fans of Dawson Knox, deservedly so. They've been on him the last couple months maybe, or they've been on him all offseason. But maybe last year they were saying we need to trade for a tight end. Or in the offseason they were saying we need to trade for Zach Ertz. Casey never did that. So Casey is my winner of the week. I don't love that I'm giving him props, <laughs> but I have to because he deserves this one. Yeah. When you get something as right as he got those two things, when you're as right as he has been and you're not getting the credit you deserve, which he's not getting the credit he deserves for this yeah. because other people are being given that credit, you deserve to get a shout out. So Casey's getting my shout out on that one. Respect to everybody else who's on that train now who's yeah. – like, yes, I'm a fan of Dawson Knox. And there's other, like, Eric from Buffalo Fanatics, he's been big on him all offseason. I don't know where he stood on him before that, so I, I can't really give him the same type of props because I haven't known him as long as I've known Casey. Yeah. So he's he's in that similar train. I just want to make sure that I give my props to Casey on that. He is my winner of the week for being as right as he's been about Dawson Knox and Spencer Brown. I have to agree with you on Casey because uh, before I joined him on our podcast, like mine and Casey's, mm -hmm. uh, I was a guest on his show and we talked about tight ends on that episode. And he was high on Dawson Knox then. I was kind of questionable. You know, I don't know. Like, we don't know what he's going to be. He's still kind of discovering himself. But Casey was set on him. He said, this guy's going to ball out one day. Um, but, uh, so yeah, and I, I get it. It's not a disrespect to anybody else who's no, a fan no. of them now or who's it given just, them props or who's gotten props for giving them props. Because yeah. if you, if you can get people to give you credit for something awesome, that's great for you. Yeah. But I want to make sure that Casey does get credit for this because he deserves that credit. So yeah. that's, I, I want to make sure that that's clear. I'm not trying yeah. to take anything away from anybody else who's been on that bandwagon. Just make sure you're also giving the credit to the right people who've been there as long as they have, because he yeah. deserves that credit. Yeah. So who who is your winner of the week? Well, you know, we, we talk about the bills. I got two. I got one bills, one non-bills. Um, so if I'm going to go with the non-bills first, just to get that out of the way, but I give it to Dak Prescott this week. Uh, the guy is from the injury he was last year to what he has done this year so far and what I think he's going to be doing. I give him full props. I think he's a winner. Um, he showed Carolina that defense was number one, not anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dak and Zeke uh, shut those guys down and uh, played a really good game. And uh, like Allen, he's got the talent around him now. Uh, he's got a decent O-line. He's got the receivers, got the tight end. Uh, uh, that was the biggest question mark, just like the Bills was the tight end. They got the running back. They got a decent defense with a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, 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 I'm I, giving a winner to him. Uh, it was between him and Burrow and Burrow's comeback. But I, I'm going to give it to Dak just because, you know, him and Burrow, what they did last year and the injuries they got and what they're doing this year, both of those guys honestly deserve my winners. But like my, winner, my winner for the Bills, the bill side of it has to be Tyler Bass. I, I think if there's any bill who doesn't get credit, it's Tyler Bass. He doesn't get enough. I know in our chats in Buffalo fanatics, we love Bass, but I think overall in, in the NFL standards, we hear Tucker or Zerline, Legatron, or, you know, the list goes Blair Walsh when he was, everybody's talking about other kickers. But nobody's talking about one of the most consistent kickers in the last couple of years, which has been Tyler Bass. This guy has been lights out. Like, I don't think McDermott is afraid of him to kick the field goal. 
when he's there, no matter what the weather. Look at that Houston game. That weather was bad, and he still yeah. was kicking those field goals straight down the middle. Um, he, I was a big Bass fan when they drafted him because I was telling – um, the person who I was on a podcast with that the guy that should be scared to get cut was Hoshka. And, and that's what happened. And I, I don't think he gets enough credit, but, and so Tyler Bass, if you're listening to us, I'm giving you credit, boy. You are <laughs> one of the best kickers in the NFL right now. Stop. He, it, it's going to definitely take him a couple of years to get on that level of getting the consistent credit that like a, uh, Justin Tucker gets and Justin Tucker's just like a different yeah. world than yeah. other kickers obviously it. like yeah. we're not trying to say he's on that same level I, I get what you're saying with that yeah. he's not on that same level yeah but when you're talking about what the type of success they've had this year I'm right there with you he's leading the league in points yeah right now. yeah like the entire NFL it's not oh. just not just certain positions not just yeah. kickers not just whatever he's leading the entire NFL yeah. in points yeah. Nobody has scored enough touchdowns to have more points than him. Nobody has kicked yeah. enough field goals to have more points than him. Tyler Bass is leading the league. So I, I, I'm with you there. He, yeah. I like that one. That's a good winner of the week. I think yeah. the other winner of the week, if we're doing a, a bill specific one, would just be Dawson Knox because yeah. of how consistent 100%. he's been so far. Yeah, he he's was made like- a, an entirely different type of he, – he's yeah. been a different type of player this year where he isn't having the drop issues. He's – he seems like whenever the Bills need a play, he's there to make one. It seems like not only that, but they're running plays specifically for him. His second yeah. touchdown catch, that was a play that was schemed up to get him the ball. Yeah, And it doesn't feel like last year or the year before they were really doing that for him as often. But this year, I it seems like there's been a couple different times where they're, he's the guy on the play. He's the guy they want to get the ball to, and he should yeah. be. He yeah. should be moving forward a little bit more too. Um, this is going to be a similar thing. I'm not saying he is a Travis Kelsey or a no. George Kittle, but he has been a hell of a lot more consistent this year. He's been playing really good football, and he deserves all the credit in the world for taking the jump to from where he was last year to where he is this year. So he'll he'll be my Bills specific I'll, winner of the week. I'll I'll go right at like the fantasy aspect. He was a tight end that majority of the leagues i've seen uh ppr or idp whatever you play he was mm-hmm. not drafted <laughs> he wasn't drafted yeah and he wasn't drafted probably, in most of my leagues yeah and and he was picked up he was one of the highest waiver pickups in the last couple of weeks and he's one of the highest fantasy tight ends which nobody ex- expected so uh, yeah 100 percent, i agree he's a winner yeah yeah. All right. Your loser of the week. Do you have a loser of the week? I do have a loser. Uh, <laughs> you're probably not going to like it, but uh, I, I, okay. Again, non bills and bills. So I'll start with the non bills. I got Baker Mayfield, who you know already. I'm not a big fan of. Yep. And yep. I know you're not a big fan. That, of that that game against Minnesota will tell you why I'm not a big fan of his. He has not looked good this year. No, and he's not looked good before either. <laughs> and he has a pretty damn good team around him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- that's on Baker, not every anybody else. Um, the other one, obviously, Carr went from up here, and then he dropped down there, <laughs> and yeah. which is typical. But my biggest loser of non-Bills, the Titans' defense. That defense, everybody was talking after they beat the Bills last year. You know, the Titan fans were everywhere like, yo, you can't mess with us. They looked horrible against the yeah. Jets. Zach Wilson, who threw more interception than I could, I probably did in my football career. <laughs> uh, like, he looked good against a Titans defense that should be a lot better. And uh, that Titans defense is going to be the worst of Tennessee. Like they, they're going to lose a lot of games because of that defense. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. That defense, it was, I think it was almost ignored how much they lost from their defense. Because it's not like they were a bad defense last year. No, no, they weren't. Schemed that the players they had there worked out really well for what they needed them to do. And this year, they lost a lot of those players. They still have some yeah. good guys there. Jeffrey yeah. Simmons is a yeah. very good player in the middle yeah. of their defense yeah. on that defensive line. They still have some good guys uh, in the secondary. But 
and they have some guys who have played well at linebacker too, but yeah. it, they don't have the full defense that yeah. they had. They lost yeah. enough players that there's a big drop off. So I, I yeah. completely agree with that. Losing to the Jets is embarrassing. <laughs> if yeah. we want to put it that way. Uh, my loser for the Bills, if I had to pick one, uh, and you know where I'm going with this. I, I do know it, where you're going with it. It is Cole Beasley. Uh, from his his Twitter rants to uh, playing 50% of the snaps will tell you a lot of what is happening with Cole Beasley. Uh, I know you're going to do, he's had this many catches. Most of those catches were majority one game. Uh, the yards are there. Sure. Two but, games, the two games, but yeah, no, sure. I, this past uh, week, I agree with you this past week. I, I think you're going to start seeing that shift between him and Sanders where Beasley's going to go down and Sanders start going to go up and Knox will probably start going up too. You're going to see Knox Sanders, going up and Beasley start coming down. I, that's my opinion. I think for the Twitter rant that was supposed to be over five weeks ago when he stated that on Twitter, is still going on. And now uh, his drop-off in playing time, uh, there's got to be a little bit of connection. Yeah, I, I've stayed away from talking about the, the Beasley stuff all off season. I, I'm going to actually chime in on this one. Not that my opinion actually matters about this. Like I, I'm very well yeah. aware of that. But I, I've had a, enough of this to the point where he's, he's been all about freedom of choice, freedom of speech. And I, I agree that in America that is a thing. You're supposed to have that. But when you have that, you also have to deal with the consequences. And if that means some people boo you, I'm sorry. I don't love that Bills fans are booing him. I would not personally boo him because I root yeah. for him as a player. Yeah. But just like he has the choice to make his own decisions, Bills fans have the choice. If they want to boo him, they can do that. I don't want them to boo him. I, I want that on the record. Yeah. Like he, I like him as a player. Yeah. I want him on this team to be successful. Yeah. I don't want Bills fans to boo him. But also, from everything that everybody was saying, even if there were some fans that were booing him, for the most part, it sounds like a lot of people were yelling bees and not boo. So maybe that's something that he just has to work out in his own head and be like, okay, maybe people aren't against as against me as I'm thinking. Maybe it's just a small faction of people. Because I think we all know, just like on the internet, the people that you hear the most, they're probably not the majority of people in that yeah. specific scenario, they're yeah. just the loud. Yeah. So despite anything else that's going on, I, I would agree with you that based off of his play from this past week and then his whole Twitter thing where I think he got caught up in his own head, probably whatever. I, I I'm not going to disagree with you. Last week was not the best week for Cole Beasley. Just, I, I, I don't want to go too much more in depth about it yeah, because I think that and, brings in a lot more discussions that we yeah, don't need and, to have on this show. But he, yeah, I, don't, I don't. I can't disagree. I don't either because you know I'm. Uh, most of the listeners know that I'm from Canada, and everybody has their rights and freedoms to make a choice, and that's not my issue. If he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. That's okay. But when you said five weeks ago that you were going to stop talking about it, and you're still talking about it five weeks after into the game, um, that's where I have the problem, and it's just play the game yeah that, I, I and 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 honestly i i'm from edmonton we've had bad years in in hockey and people were throwing their jerseys on the ice so there's nothing worse than getting a jersey of your team that you play for as a as a professional athlete onto the ice and so a little bit of booze and you know what fans pay for that they work hard and they work hard to buy those tickets, those season tickets, right? So if a couple of people boo you. It's, yeah, I, I don't want fans to boo him. I don't I'm either. Not, I wouldn't boo him I personally. I like him as a football you also, player. You also have to be able to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. It's not fun to go through dealing yeah. with that as a player. I get that. There's yeah. no denying that. If you hear yeah. some people yelling at you from the sideline. I get that that's not fun. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you go into a game being like, boy, I hope somebody yells at me today. Yeah. I hope I get a bunch yeah. of boos today, yeah. or I hope I hear a couple of boos or whatever it is. But you still have to be able to deal with that and I, move on because yeah. a majority of Bill's Mafia 
despite anything that happened in the offseason, despite what anybody said, if you were to poll every single person in Bill's Mafia and say, are you rooting for Cole Beasley on the field or not? They're going to say yes. Yeah, 100%. It's just a couple of people who are a little yeah. bit louder who are going yeah. to say whatever. And once again, this is strictly an on-the-field thing because I don't really want to get into get all the off-the-field yeah, stuff because it. we've already it. hashed all of that out yeah. enough during the offseason. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to d- disagree with you there. Yeah, My loser of the week is Cody Ford because I I have been backing him and I've been backing him and I've been backing him thinking that he is going to not necessarily be like a superstar by any means, but I thought he was going to be able to be a serviceable starter who maybe he gets like a, a – really small second contract or something, or maybe he's just worth keeping as the starter for the duration of his contract. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's all, but I I'm, I'm fading. (laughs) I'm fading on that. I didn't want to. I was, I think part of my thought that he could do that was more of a hope that he could do that because I think the skill set is still there, but something just ain't right where he's not making it work. So I don't want to see the offensive line have to shift around and play guys who really probably shouldn't be starting in the NFL because their skill set is not to the level of a starter or whatever. Maybe they don't have the size, whatever it may be. I don't want to see the offensive line shift, but Cody Ford just apparently has not been playing well enough for that to happen where they keep that steady. And it sounds like he might not have a starting job moving forward. That's not ideal when you're a second round pick. We'll see how this plays out. We'll see if he's the starter this week. Maybe things change again. But as of right now, from this past week, Cody Ford is my loser of the week. I hate to do it, but I have to do it. But I, I believe he had a tough off season too, where he got sick, didn't he? Was I? I know Deion Dawkins did. Yeah, I don't Deion remember did. if Cody I don't know. Ford if, yeah, I don't did. know if if he did. It was not right during training camp or anything like yeah. that. I would think that it's. Recent enough where it wouldn't have been like a big issue at yeah. this point. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if I like to really yeah, throw that on. Them. Yeah, I don't know. I agree with you. I think I thought he was going to be a starter of some sort. Uh, yeah. But it just doesn't seem like you know, like spent you know Brown coming in and 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 Williams getting moved over and and Dawkins looking like he's healthy again and it, yeah. Where's Ford fit? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not totally sure moving forward. I think the yeah. entire interior offensive line after this year might we, – we might be looking at a completely different three guys yeah. on the interior offensive line, two yeah. of them because of play, one of them because of contract, whatever. that yeah. We might be looking at that. I think at the yeah. minimum we're probably looking at two different guys on the interior. But yeah, I that's, a, that's a conversation for the future. Yeah. I, I want to say this before we move on to the betting segment. You have filled in perfectly for Casey because we said at the beginning we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the past game (laughs) against the Texans. And here we are 38 minutes in, and we've done it. (laughs) So you have filled Casey's shoes perfectly. So let's let's move on from that game. That game in the past. It was a great game. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. But we got to give our bets now. Yeah. We got our five best bets. Before you get into yours, I'll let you give yours before I give mine. Sure. Casey – did text in his bets. So this yeah. is going to be on the record. Here's what Casey's on. I know he put out his article on Buffalo Fanatics, thebuffalofanatics.com. Go read his article. Every single Wednesday, he puts out an article about which picks he's going to be on for the week. He did add to that because for this show, we're doing five. His article, sometimes it's going to have three, sometimes it's going to have four, sometimes it might have five. But for the purpose of the show, we're giving out five picks every single week. The yeah. games Casey is on. The Thursday night football game. It's a little late for anyone to bet this, obviously, but he is on the Rams covering the two and a half. He is on the Chargers covering two points against the Browns. He's on the Jets covering a three-point spread against the Falcons. He's on the Colts covering a seven-point spread, and he's on the Bills covering a three-point spread. So he loves the dogs this week, which I got to say, is a good strategy this this season. It's a yeah. strategy that makes me uncomfortable to pick that many dogs, but it it, it's a strategy that's working. So we'll see how that plays out. We will be keeping yeah. a record of 
the picks moving forward. Um, so we'll make sure that we are able to put that out every week of mine and Casey's. And then obviously this week, your, your picks will be a part of that. What are, what are your five picks this week, Manny? So I got Las Vegas bouncing back, uh, minus five and a half. So now I can't remember the top of my head, uh, who they were playing, but when I was making the choice, I said Las Vegas at five and a half. I, Kyle, I don't know if you can get the schedule up I'm, there. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking it up right now just so I can give yeah. you that. It's the, it's the Raiders versus the Bears. Yeah, so with Montgomery, M- M- Montgomery's out now for four to five weeks. So I think this is – and they don't know what – I don't know what Chicago's doing with their quarterback. So I think this might be a Las Vegas bounce back, and uh, uh, they take it five and a half. I got the Cowboys at uh, minus seven. I think that's they got the Giants. Yep. A, a touchdown. I think they're a better team right now. We talked about Dak earlier, and Zeke seems to be in his game. Thank God, because I have him in fantasy. Uh, so that's my other one. I got uh, Indy money line, and okay, uh, uh, I think that might be the upset of the week. Uh, they are playing Indy the money line against Baltimore. That's yes. okay. That's that's an interesting I, one. I think if Carson Wentz is helped healthy i think carson wentz is a good enough quarterback he was ba- he's basically what andy dalton was for the cincinnati Bengals when they always made the playoffs. i think carson wentz is that type of quarterback if he's healthy they're good enough they got good weapons they got a great running back and their defense still underrated and everybody knows what i think about baltimore all the time i think they're an overrated <laughs> team that runs with the quarterback majority of the time um so that's my other one. Uh, I got Devontae Adams' first touchdown in the Green Bay game. Oh, going with a prop bet. Okay. Prop bet, Devontae Adams. I always tell people if you want to do a first touchdown, which are sometimes good odds, you know, first touchdown, Devontae Adams, always good. It's a good bet to have. Um, that's, that's not a bad one. I'm sure you're getting some good juice with that too. Yeah. And then uh, the last one is Bills Chiefs over 56 and a half. Okay. All right. All there's right. There's my five. So there's your, those are your five picks of the yeah. week. Yeah. If you like Manny better than you like me and Casey, which I'm sure a lot of people do, <laughs> roll with his picks. Uh, yeah. Here are my five picks of the week. I... So when I, I gotta say this, I when I look at I look at the board early in the week. Sometimes I yeah. place my bets early. Yeah. Sometimes I wait and I, I let them develop. I'm also doing every single Friday, I put out my Twitter poll bet of the week. I let anybody who wants to vote on that on Twitter decide which pick I am betting. Um this week I will say I haven't decided yet who I'm putting in that Twitter poll. So I'm sorry, but the Twitter poll will be out. When you're listening to this, it'll be out on my Twitter at Kyle Naps. Go vote on that. We'll see. But I, I got some interesting ones this week. I, I'm taking some chances. It's good. Sounds like I'm the going, dogs. I'm going with the Jets money line. <laughs> I, th- I think Jets just win outright against the Falcons. And I put this pick in before Calvin Ridley was confirmed to not be playing. I yeah. feel even better about this pick now that Calvin Ridley is not playing. You're not going to get as good of juice on this as I got when I put it in um, before that happened. But there's still the Jets are still going to be dogs in this game. So I think they're riding off a high of beating the Titans. Normally, I would say that's going to crash and burn with the Jets. But they're also going up against a team that is just god awful in the Falcons. Like there's there's not many redeemable qualities of the Falcons, especially when you consider Calvin Ridley is not playing. Yeah. So I Jets. like my chances on this one. The Jets. Bas- it's it's basically the Jets playing the Jets. <laughs> yeah. Except for the Jets actually have somewhat of a defense. Like it's not like yeah. the Jets are a yeah yeah absolutely horrible team altogether. They don't have a good offense. I will say that. They're not a good team when you put it all together, but they have some redeeming qualities, and it's their defense. The Falcons don't have the redeeming qualities of a good defense. I think that Zach Wilson will probably still have his rookie moments, but he's going to be able to make some things happen. I, I like the Jets' money line this week. I Next one, 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was calling my name. I tried putting yeah. it off, but I just couldn't I couldn't shake it. Yeah. Next one I got the Patriots and the Texans. I'm going with the under. And it's a low under. It's 39 and a half. It's a low under for the NFL. Yeah. But I just I, the Patriots defense should be able to shut down the Texans to the point where I don't think they score more than twice against the Patriots defense. Like it's the Patriots have a good defense, regardless of what you think of the team as a whole. That defense is not going to let up a whole lot of points, especially when they're going up against a rookie quarterback. Bill Belichick versus rookie quarterbacks equals disaster for the opposing team. And then the Texans defense is just not all that good. I think that they're not going to give up like a 40 to nothing game again, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a game that's like 17 to 6, 17 to 10, where the Patriots win that. Like that wouldn't surprise me. I don't think they get to 40 points because I don't think there's enough offensive firepower. And I think the Patriots defense is good enough to just absolutely stifle that Texans team. I got the Cowboys. I got them at seven and a half. So it sounds like the line has moved a little bit. I think the Cowboys are just I, I think they're a much better team than we expected them to be. They're a good yeah. defensive team, at least good enough to cause some problems for the offense. Trayvon Diggs has been a beast, an yeah. absolute animal. I wish the Bills had picked him. It is what it is. Um, but, you know, you, it's all hindsight 2020. Yeah. Um, but I think they'll be able to cover that seven and a half. We saw them go into a game against a really good Panthers team or what we thought was a really good Panthers team this past week, and they won by uh, more than – I think they won by double digits, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was yeah, they, yeah, they, I think yeah, I think they won by double digits, two scores, two plus scores. Yeah. I think they're going to be able to do something similar. It's going to be a game where they control the entire game, and the game might not be that it's a Daniel Jones issue, but somebody else on the Giants is going to make a mistake that allows them to get that point spread covered. I got the Cardinals covering minus six. I think the Cardinals are a legitimately good team. I think they're a problem. I don't believe in the 49ers when they're starting a rookie quarterback who by all met, like by all means hasn't had a great performance to date. And I know he's not been a starter. I understand that, but he hasn't looked all that great. There's been a lot of issues when he's played where he just doesn't seem to have the touch. He doesn't seem to be working through the progressions. He's not all there yet. He has all of those skills and abilities you want, but he hasn't pieced it all together where he is a really good starting NFL quarterback that he could be. So I like the Cardinals to cover because I think he's going to make a couple of mistakes. And that Cardinals offense, I know Bills fans don't want to give them credit, but <laughs> they're so good. That Cardinals offense is really good. And the defense is they're clicking. Um, the last one is Bucks minus 10 against the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are an absolute joke this year. They're they were supposed to be a lot better than they are. I don't think the Bucs are going to have as bad of a performance as they had against the Patriots. They're going to come out swinging. They're going to put up a lot of points. They're going to be able to force – I think if Brissett is still a starter, they're going to be able to force him into some issues. I don't even think it matters, though, if he's the starter or if Tua were to come back, which I don't think he can at this point. I, I just don't think it matters. I think this Bucks team is far and away better than the Dolphins, and they should be able to cover that. So I am going against the trend where – the, the dogs have been covering. Yeah. They've even been winning. I I cannot get away from it that I, I just I think this might be the week that we don't see that trend follow all the way through. Those are my five picks. Now yeah. let's get on to the Sunday night football game. Yes. Because this is a I mean this probably yeah. is the oh. biggest game of the Bills season. Would you agree with that? Uh yeah, I think so. I yeah, I mean, I, I, I would want to say maybe the Tampa you, Bay you game. Got it. But yeah, that's the, the AFC, other one. With the AFC implications of like yeah. what could what this could mean for the playoff positioning, yeah. home field advantage, potentially all of that. I think this ends up being the biggest game of the Bills season because I, I think this has to be a game where they come out and I, I put out a poll early. I think it was week two, leading into week two. Is it a must win or a can't lose? And – there's times where can't lose is the right answer. As dumb as it is that you can have both answers, this game for the Bills is a must-win game. You have to come out and show that you can beat this team. They don't have a very good defense right now. They have not been playing well. Your defense has been crushing it. 
It's number one offense versus number one defense. And then the Bills offense is going up the against the second or last place defense in the league. I think it's last right now. They have to be able to take advantage of that. So let's go over some of the important players. Who yeah. is your key player on offense for the Chiefs? For the Chiefs, I think it's Edwards Hilaire. I think okay. uh, we, we've seen uh, you know Tyreek Hill, Kelsey. We all know what they can do, right? I think I think Hilaire is the question mark on that offense. I think there's sometimes where he just gets stuffed on the go on the line, and I, I I think our D line has been better against the run, and I I think that's going to be the real question: is Hilaire and Mahomes going to be able to? Uh, is Mahomes going to get Hilaire open and get that ball to him as a pass catching and as a running back? So I think he's the key because we kind of already know what the other two can do. Okay. I, I don't hate that. I mean, we saw last year that yeah. the Bills decided they were going to play the type of defense that said, look, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us with your running game. And Edwards Alaire did end up doing did, enough doing that. Yeah. based off of what the Bills offense did. Yeah. But yeah. he did enough where he crushed the Bills on the ground yeah. game. Yeah. They they have to find a way to not let that happen while also find like slowing down yeah. Mahomes and the rest of the offense. Yeah. I know the real X factor of this team is Patrick Mahomes. I, I know that he is the best player on the team, the best player on the offense. He is the best quarterback in the league. I'm not going to apologize for saying that either. Allen is close. He is not there yet. Yeah. But I'm not saying Mahomes is the X factor or the game changer of this game. I think Travis Kelsey is still the game changer. And it falls partially because Matt Milano potentially might not play. And if he does play, he's going to be playing injured. Yeah. And I think that's huge. If Matt Milano plays, how do the Bills use Milano plus X player to cover Travis Kelsey. If Milano doesn't play, how do the Bills use two players probably to cover Kelsey? Because they're going to have to stop him. He has had yeah. he had a two touchdown day against the Bills in the regular season. He just absolutely dominated them however he wanted to in the playoffs. He is a problem for this Bills defense. The Bills are going to have to figure out a way. How do they slow him down? You're not going to be able to stop him completely. You're not going to be able to shut out him and Tyreek Hill. But he has been a problem for the Bills. So yeah. I think he's the X factor of how do the Bills stop him? Because if the Bills can stop him, slow him down, whatever, they're going to be more successful. I I agree. I think Kelsey is, you know, like I said, we know what Kelsey and Tyreek Hill is. You just can't lose sight of Hill, and you got to make sure that you know you're you're covering Kelsey. And if Matt Milano can't play, that's that's a big loss. That's going to be a huge loss, and that was the problem last time too. When Kelsey scored those two touchdowns, Milano wasn't there, <laughs> and so so that's the big thing. My mic was muted. Um, yeah, so I, I think figuring out how to slow him down is yeah. going to be the biggest issue. So he's my X factor, my game changer, because, like I said, as good as Tyreek Hill is, I trust in this Bill's secondary that he's not going to break this game wide open. He's going to have a big play at some point. He's going to yeah. get some yards. He's going to do his thing. But he's not likely going to be the guy two weeks in a row where it's we go to Tyreek Hill, we go to Tyreek Hill, we go to Tyreek Hill, because he had a massive game this past week against the Eagles. Almost had four touchdowns. I don't think it's going to be that type of thing where he's that go-to every single play. Travis Kelsey is consistently their go-to every single play where he's going to he's going to kill you 7 to 10 to 12 yards per reception. It's going to hurt. He's going to get first downs. He's going to keep the chains moving. And he's going to do it in the middle of the field. And the Bills have struggled that way against the Chiefs up to this point. They need to figure out a way to slow him down. So he is my offensive game changer. I, I think part of it is that if you can stop Hilaire too, because that opens up Kelsey, yeah. right? If you can stop Hilaire, you can cover Kelsey a lot better. If the front four can stop Hilaire from getting those, you know, six yards, seven yards, and more like one or two, then you got a better chance against Kelsey. 
And so I think they kind of complement each other. Like the that's, that's a good point. Yeah. So. All right. Who is your game changer X factor for the defense on the Chiefs? Uh, I basically think it's the secondary and most it's 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 Matthew and Sorensen. I think if those two can cover that, you know, the Bills are a passing team no matter what. Uh, I think if Sorensen and Matthew can stop, uh, you know, that receiving core and plus now a, a, a new version of Dawson Knox, let's say, uh-huh. uh, and Matthew is going to be key in covering Dawson Knox. Uh, I think, I think that's where I think the X factor is, is how much can those guys impact that passing game? Okay, I I like that because I I agree with you that their linebackers have struggled enough against the pass against yeah. tight ends that the safeties are going to have to be some guys that come in yeah. and maybe help out with that yeah. coverage. I I do have a, a Dawson Knox question that I want to get into in a, a little bit. I want to yeah. give my X factor first though. I'm glad you went with the secondary. I'm glad you went with Tyron Matthew. He was the other guy I was going to talk about if yeah. you took mine. Mine's Chris Jones, though. I, we've seen two games against the Chiefs. He has just destroyed the Bills' offensive plans. He was playing on the inside of the defensive line. He was playing more of a defensive tackle, nose tackle type of position for them yeah. at that point. He has since moved to defensive end. He has not had as good of a season this year. However, we still know the type of player he is. It's not like he's all of a sudden become this just shell of himself where he's not good. No, he's just still figuring out how to play it from a different position. It might take some time, but within that time, he still has all the same abilities to absolutely wreck a game plan. We know the Bills' offensive line is getting better. I think everybody agrees that the Bills' offensive line looks better at this point than they did at the beginning of the season. However, they're still at a point where they have that tendency or ability to let a single player ruin a play multiple times if chris jones is able to do that a couple times get josh allen off his game hit him a couple times make him try and make a play he's not supposed to or he doesn't want to that can be something that really causes some issues i think the bills are going to have to find a way to not let him get onto the inside if they run a couple stunts don't let him get up the center of the field against josh allen because that can really cause some problems but on the edge, when he's playing that strict defensive end uh, style position, yeah. use Dawson Knox, use the running back, use Gabriel Davis, who has kind of played that pseudo tight end role. Yeah. Use them to just chip him. Don't let him get a free run where he's playing one-on-one against anybody on the Bills' offensive line. Yeah, I, That that makes me nervous because he is the type of player who, though he has not done it this year, He can be a game wrecker. We know that. So he's my X factor on the defense. My question regarding Dawson Knox, and then we'll get into our predictions and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do predictions, game lines, all that, which I know you gave your game line already, but Dawson Knox, does he end up having a better game this week than Travis Kelsey? Who, which one of them ends up having a better game? Because Travis Kelsey is far and away the better tight end. Dawson Knox is on a bit of a heater right now in terms yeah. of consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Does he is he able to end up outperforming Travis Kelsey partially due to the fact that he's having a good year and also partially due, partially due to the fact that the Chiefs have really really struggled against tight ends this year. Yeah, um and mine was kind of set on the X factor we're talking about X factor for the Chiefs. It was I had an X factor for the Bills on offense. And that Mm -hmm. X factor is Josh Allen. And I think Knox is dependent on how Josh Allen plays in this game. I think he's the X factor for the Bills on offense. If he struggles and he plays like he was in Pittsburgh or even the second week, uh, if we see him, Allen, for the first two weeks, I think Knox struggles. I think Matthew is, is good enough to cover him and help maybe Hitchens out or somebody like that on the linebacker. 
Kelsey is Kelsey. I, I, I think Kelsey is the guy who will probably get the most yards because I think Allen is the key, and we don't know what Allen we're going to get against the Chiefs. That's fair. I, I think it's it's much easier to predict that Kelsey will end up yeah, outperforming Goss and Knox. It's, it's the safe. It's, well, it's the I'm, safe. Not even, I'm not even calling it a cop-out yeah. because it's the answer that I would definitely lean towards also yeah. if you had asked yeah. me the question. Yeah. I The reason that I think it's a fair question isn't because of their talent level or career production or anything like that. It's more yeah. because of the defenses that they're going against. But then you factor in that Matt Milano is not playing, and that completely yeah. changes and throws a wrench yeah. in the whole discussion. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I, I actually have, uh, for the offensive side of the ball, and I don't know if I asked you to have this ready. I can't remember or not. But my key to the game for the Bills, one of them on offense, if you guys had taken my main one, was to keep the Josh Allen-Dawson Knox connection going because I think that's going to be great for this team throughout the entire season. So I want to see that. My biggest key to the game, though, and I think this fits offensively and defensively, is to win the battles at the line of scrimmage because of what I said about Chris Jones. Yeah. If the Bills can maintain their offensive line and not get blown up you know, multiple times like we saw against the Steelers, their game plan, even if Josh Allen isn't the best version of Josh Allen, will still be good enough to get a win yeah. as long as the offensive line holds up. If the offensive line doesn't hold up, Josh Allen is going to have to be the best version of himself to do enough to get a win. So the offensive line has to be able to control the Chiefs defensive line because it's not like outside of Chris Jones, they just have nobodies. They still got some guys. I know Frank Clark has got his whole thing going on, and I, I'm not assuming he's going to play, but you never know. But they still got some guys who can make plays happen. The offensive line has to hold up in order to let Josh be Josh instead of forcing Josh to be superhero Josh, if that makes sense. In terms of the defensive line, the Chiefs, they're, they're better on the interior, I think. From what I've seen, they're better on the interior of their offensive line than they are with the tackles currently. I think the Bills could potentially get some edge pressure to make Mahomes hold the ball, converge the pocket on him, not let him get the ball out as quick as he has, and slow down the Chiefs' offense because they've been running a much faster offense um, than they have in previous years. That's that's what Joe Marino on the Lockdown Podcast told me. That's what he said on his show. I, I mean, he's really good with all those numbers, so I'm, I'm going to trust yeah. him and everything that he says with that. From the sounds of it, from the stats, they're getting the ball out a lot quicker. I think the way they defend that is by getting that pressure on the edges and converging the pocket on Mahomes and forcing him to hold the ball and make another read, make another decision, not just quick, get the ball out, go to your first read, get the ball out, go to your second read even. Make him go through his entire progression because he has not been as good on the move this year as he has been in previous years. So. The offensive line, defensive line for the Bills, yeah. they're the guys who I think have to step up this week. I, I think my uh, my keys are uh, basically – I'm not worried about the offense. I think Allen, the O-line, the running back, I think they're just starting to gel. You got Sanders now starting to gel. Knox is starting to gel. I, my concern is the defense. And you know me, last year, what did I say all mm -hmm. season? If you want to beat Casey, who are the kings of the AFC, you need to touch Mahomes. And they didn't for the two games they played. And yep. I said, you need a new D-line. Yeah, and they went out, got B B Bash, uh, they got Basham and Russo. And so they got the guys. They had some guys already, you know, Epinenza and so the key to me is you got to be able to touch Mahomes. You, mm -hmm. it, you don't have to sack him. You don't have to, you know, like, you don't have to do anything like that. A, a touch, just so he knows that you're there. And that is the key because that will make Mahomes second guess. And that's where he makes his errors uh, that he has done this year is when he has to make that second, like you said, the second read. 
and he throws it where he doesn't have to do the no look and he throws the no look and it goes off of Kelsey, things like that. You make him realize that I don't got that much time. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. My second key is the secondary. This is going to be a big test for the secondary. And, uh, you know, Teron Johnson and Poyer coming back from injury, we don't, I really don't know how serious that injury was or how is it still lingering or are they fully 100% healthy? Teron Johnson has been a key this year. He's been playing a he's lot. Been so good this year. He's yeah. been so good and he's been a key and he's going to be key not just in the secondary, but I think he's going to be key with him and Hyde maybe mix blitzing uh kind of putting pressure on Mahomes as well so up on the line I've seen Hyde and Teron Johnson do that with quarterbacks this year on our defense so I think they're key because you don't want to lose you don't want to lose Tyreek Hill or Hardman or even Josh Gordon now we don't know what Josh Gordon's coming Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is my key is how healthy are those guys because Teron Johnson and Jordan Poyer are like, of course, we played the Texans. This is not the Texans. This is the Chiefs. Are they healthy enough? And is Levi Wallace going to be able to cover Tyree Kill on that outside? Because we know that White doesn't seem to move with anybody. So it's whoever's on that side. And I will mm-hmm. guarantee you, Andy Reid is one of the smartest coaches ever. He will make sure that Hill is playing majority of his snaps on Levi Wallace aside. And so yeah. those are my two keys, D line and the secondary. All right. Give me give me your game prediction. This is not score prediction. This is a prediction for a player or event in the game. Uh I think Teron Johnson gets Do a it. sack in this game. I was going to oh, say... I thought, uh, I thought you were going to say pick six. No, I think he'll get a sack on defense. I okay. think that's one. And I think uh, Macaulay Hardman will probably get a punt return or a kickoff return. Oh, I don't like that. I, yeah. I don't like that at all. All right, well... <laughs> man, okay. Um, I, I think Dawson Knox goes for 75 yards and continues his touchdown streak. Yeah, I, can I think he has a very good game this week. I think the their lack of ability to cover tight ends lends towards him getting even more targets, and it might take away targets from a guy like Beasley who didn't have his all, all that many targets last week but over the course of the year has or could take away targets from Sanders. It's not going to take away targets from Diggs. I'm confident in that. But there's yeah, going yeah. to be somebody else that I think it takes away targets from. I don't think it matters, though, because – the Chiefs have struggled so much to cover yeah. the tight end that I think he's going to be able to have a really good game this week to yeah. continue that streak and just kind of further that, oh, he's he's here. He is yeah. legit with where he at, he's at at tight end I, right now. I think I, the other the other prediction I have yeah. is I think I think I don't know which one I want to go for. I have a couple of different predictions written down. I I'm going to roll with this one, though. I had the potential of saying the Bills score a defensive touchdown. I don't know if I want to. You know what? No, screw it. I'm going to get that bold. I think the Bills score a defensive touchdown. I think that ends up being the difference in the game because their defense has done everything right this year except be able to capitalize off a turnover and score a touchdown. I think they're going to be able to get one or two turnovers this week. They're going to find a way, whether it's, a fumble recovery or multiple interceptions, whatever it is, I think they'll be able to cause some chaos against this Chiefs team still, despite the Chiefs being as good as they are. I think the Bills defense has been playing good enough to cause some problems. I think this is going to be the week that they capitalize on that score defensive touchdown, and that might just be the difference in the game. I'm going bold, and I'm sticking to it. I I got one more prediction for you. Okay. I, I, I honestly think that – uh, you will see uh, Josh Allen score another rushing touchdown. Okay, maybe even I like that one. Maybe even two. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, there we go. That would be awesome. Yeah. I, I'm down for any sort of Josh Allen yeah. touchdown. Yeah, 
Uh, over under 56, I believe you already gave yeah. the over. Um, I am rolling with the under on this one. Yeah. It pains me to say that. I hate taking unders, but I think it's probably the right call because I think defense might end up winning out in terms of the Bills versus the Chiefs, where, yes, the Chiefs are going to score points, but I don't think it's – I think 56 is a really high number when you end up having the number one defense in football. Um, so that's that's where I'm at. I think the Bills still cover the two and a half. I think the Bills win. I'm taking the money line. I said I wasn't going to do it, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I mush this entire game, but I'm taking the Bills' money line. I think the Bills win 27-14. to 14. I think it's a close game. It's going to be a nail-biter, but I think the Bills pull this one out in the end. They get the win in Kansas City. That's my score prediction. What's yours? I think the offense is a – Oh, like they are alive and ready to go against the Bills. I mean, against the Chiefs, sorry. That the Bills, Allen and company are ready to go and they're ready to kill this defense in Kansas City. Uh, I think the problem is going to be just like Carolina Panthers had a wake up call against the Dallas Cowboys last week as Mm -hmm. the number one defense. The Bills, I think, are going to still struggle to stop. Patty Mahomes and the offense. So okay. I say it's going to be, that's why I'm saying over, because I think it's going to be a 38 34 for the Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs cover the three and a half and uh, Chiefs money line. I think, I think with Milano, we don't know what Milano is. We don't know Poyer's injury, if, it, if he re injures it, Teron Johnson. Those three guys are pretty key cogs against the kings of the AFC. I, yeah. I, it hurts me to say it. It hurts me because I do because I think until the Bills can beat the Chiefs, that Bills are always going to be the number two. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that that time will come in the playoffs though. Once right. everybody's I- healthy. I said before the season that even if the Bills do not end up beating the Chiefs in the regular season, the only thing that matters in terms of playing against the the Chiefs is if they can beat them when they face off in the playoffs, if they face off in the playoffs. So as much as it pains me to say this, it's okay if the Bills don't win this game. It doesn't feel good. It's going to suck if the Bills lose. When I They should win. Yeah, they should win. I want them to win. Right? But it's like, not the end of the world as, if they lose. As a fan, I want them to win. I want them to destroy Mahomes just because they're they're basically the new Patriots for, for us Bills yeah. fans. Um, and you don't want them to succeed. So for me, saying that Kansas City is going to win, not a big deal. You, the, Bills are, weren't going to win every game. Yeah. And, 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 and if it was in Buffalo, I'd probably have – a different score for you. I I get that. I get that. All right. Um, last thing. I haven't acknowledged this the entire show. Your shirt. Boardman yeah. gets paid. Um, yes. Can you give me a Kawhi Leonard laugh? Do you have that in you? Ha 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 ha. All right. There we go. That's that's how we're gonna close it out there. Let me yeah. let me get a go Bills, Manny. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.